Hello everyone, my name is uh, Marion Ranchet. Uh, I'm the founder and uh, managing director of uh, the Local Act, a streaming video consultancy. And today we have a, a great panel on addressable TV. So, the reason why we're talking about addressable TV, we have a very loyal relationship with a specific set of players in this space. They provide us with internet, mobile, television, it's our telecom operators. And because of that tight and long-standing relationship, these guys have a lot of data about us, our usages, and the days are gone where we were just watching the same advertising you know, across the entire footprint. Today, they have the ability to offer us what they call addressable TV, and so it's a bespoke ad uh, at a household uh, level. So we have a fantastic panel for you guys. I will let them introduce themselves. I'm going to start with uh, Albertian from Liberty Global. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I work for the uh, product entertainment department of uh, Liberty Global. We develop products for all of our uh, operating companies, for example, Virgin Media in the UK, in Ireland, Vodafone Zico, Netherlands, and Telenet in Belgium, for example. Uh, and we are basically rolling out all kinds of different addressable TV advertising solutions uh, across our uh, whole footprint. Hello. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, uh, Emmanuel, I'm, um, I'm working at uh, Canal Plus One Solution, which is the, the ad sales house of uh, Canal Plus Group. And uh, Canal, Plus, uh, Canal Plus is a bit like, like Sky, uh, since we, we are both a publisher with a free-to-air and a pay TV channel, as well as an uh, operate, uh, um, satellite operator and a, a distributor with uh, about 21 million subscribers worldwide, including in, uh, in Czech Republic. And uh, it's with this uh, double hat that I'm very happy to join this, uh, this panel today. Hi everyone, my name is Ran. I'm part of uh, the setting group. You probably ask yourself what the hell is setting and what is related to TV, so I will try to explain. Setting is like a, an infrastructure company owned by uh, the PPF group, which is like a working in this region. And we, are, we have developed and launched a TV solution for the group customers. So our group having the telcos, O2 and Yetel and like Czech Republic, Serbia, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Slovakia. So we are having a TV service in five countries. And one of the other benefits that we are having, we are having the broadcasters, which are the CME group. It's also part of the PPF. So we are actually owning the all echo change from the broadcaster to the telcos to the infrastructure. And uh, this actually brings us into a new interesting position which will allow us to handle addressable TV in a nice way. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Florent. My name is Florent. And I'm working with Cine Media um, that some of you might have heard of. Cine Media is a global video technology provider. And I'm more specifically in charge of business development activities with regard to advanced advertising or uh, advanced advertising vertical and we've launched a product, uh, an advanced advertising platform, which is Iris, and I think we'll have a moment to talk about that. So, um, thank you. Hello from my side, so my name is Dominic Christofek. I'm leading the strategy of Blue Entertainment. For all who don't know this company, it's a 100% subsidiary of Swisscom, so the incumbent telco in Switzerland. And uh, on the one side, we operate um, the biggest TV platform also in Switzerland. We have a market share of about 40%. And we also are the biggest pay TV provider, having different packages in sports and fiction. And um, we have operate one ad-financed free TV channel on our platform. Um, besides that, uh, which is very specific to Switzerland or to the Swiss market, we have um, almost uh, 500 TV channels on our platform. Why? Because we have all those channels from the neighboring countries as well, from Germany, Austria, France and Italy. Thanks. Before we get started, we're missing one mic. If we can have another one so we avoid sharing. Thank you. Sharing is caring. 
Thanks a lot. So uh, at the top of the presentation, we had uh, Victor from DataXis speaking to where addressable is available, but I went too fast. So could you, maybe one of you, tell us where is addressable TV live today or getting deployed? Uh, we got the news that A1 in Austria is, is, is working on that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then is it a European thing, addressable TV, or is it a, more of a global phenomenon? Um, Albertian, maybe you want to kickstart. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, I think it's it's a global phenomenon. Although uh, uh, the only markets I know is are the European markets and the US market. Honestly, I don't know what what's happening in Asia, for example, or any anywhere else. Uh, but typically, there I think there is a need for addressability on top of linear TV uh, with with audiences moving into. Uh, AVOD, SVOD, uh, other online environments. Uh, traditional linear TV is losing ground, obviously, and not only using viewers, but they're also lacking behind on, on, on targetability, I think. So you, you need more ways of granular targeting capabilities for linear TV to be able to be on par with you know the, the big tech in the market, I think. So. Uh, those are a few of the reasons why there is a need for addressability in, in, in markets. Uh, I think a lot of markets are already rolling out addressability in, in Europe, maybe even 10 markets. We are active in five at the moment. Uh, you never know how, how, how that stays within Liberty because Liberty is known for you know, a lot of uh, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, but today we are active in four markets, so in UK, Ireland, in uh, Belgium for a long time already, Switzerland and uh, soon also in the Netherlands. So later this year, uh, somewhere in July, we'll launch addressability on the set box environment obviously uh, in the Netherlands. And, and maybe to add to this is, uh, because that might also be a question, is it, is it uh, time, sw uh, time switched, you know, is it VOD, is it linear? Uh, we tend to launch on linear uh, for two reasons. The biggest audiences are still on linear, although there, we have some broadcasters even in our own uh, footprint, uh, which we own, uh, where, where they see audience shift to, to video on demand. Uh, but in most countries, linear is by far the, the most used uh, way of watching TV, and therefore there's the most revenue. Um, but we also have solutions on the VOD, on what we call replay TV, which is really a live to vault uh, way of you know, uh, recording uh, live TV. Uh, recordings, so people are allowed to record in the cloud VR. their fo favorite programs. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and not to forget, obviously, our OTT application. Ran, I can see you want to speak. Go for it. Tell us. Did you saw? Okay. Uh, my point of view is that uh, addressable TV is here. I'm saying here because like everyone are talking about it. Uh, not all the markets are ready for it, but I think that everyone agree that this is the future. Because technology is going that way. A few years ago, not so many, uh, let's call it telcos or others were able to launch it. Now, from a technical perspective, everyone can do it. On the other end, I don't think that everyone right now can see business cases which are really flying. On the other end, everyone understands that it will fly. So it's just a matter of time. By doing addressable TV, we can easily increase, let's call it, the cake itself, because the revenues will grow. On the other end, there is like, a, and this is something that I think the whole panel will agree, huge, let's call it political uh, discussions between telcos, broadcaster, who is owning it, who is managing it, who is the dump pipe, who is controlling the agencies, etc., etc. So we will discuss it here, but what I will try to say is that everyone will go there and it's just a matter of when. Maybe, Emmanuel, do you want to add something? Yes, <clears throat> maybe uh, 
uh, because uh, in in France, uh, in France, uh, linear addressable TV uh, was uh, authorized in uh, two uh, two, 2020. Uh, 2021, it was kind of an MVP year, but it uh, it was uh, actually launched uh, last year in 2022, and uh, and I agree that it's fr it's flying. Uh, what what we what we saw during uh, during that year, we uh, we have about uh, 1,300 uh, uh, targeted campaign aired on uh, on our linear uh, linear addressable uh, channels. We have uh, over uh, 700 advertisers with uh, about 50 percent which were uh, already advertisers present uh, in television and uh, 50 percent which were newcomers. So that's very interesting because it shows that uh, linear addressable t TV um, is able to federate both uh, TV advertisers and always and also uh, new uh, newcomers. And uh, and last year, in fact, it generated uh, um, uh, 18, 18 million euros. So to to give you an idea, is for this first year is already about five percent of all TV. Uh, uh, budget so uh, for the first year it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite good and only to, uh, to, to, to to finish I think it's important uh, it's important to specify that in France uh, telco operators they, they, they play a, a major uh, a major role in uh, addressable TV because um, uh, a large majority of us household uh, they watch television uh, through uh, IP uh, IP TV. So in France, uh, addressable TV have been launched with uh, telco operators. How big is your footprint? At, at Canal Plus? Yes. Uh, uh, at Canal Plus, we, we have uh, over 20% 20, 20 of our souls that are our, our customers. But I think it's important to specify because I have this double ad. We launched addressable TV on our free-to-air channels, dealing with other telco operators. But right now, we have not yet launched addressable TV as an operator. It is something we are working on, and we will start with our, with our channels and then extend to other channels, hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah. And how, how many people can receive it currently? Uh, can, can I press? Oh, the addressable TV. Yeah. Ah, sorry, that's a very good question. Right now, uh, the coverage of linear addressable TV is 25% uh, of uh, French households. In France, I think the particularity is that three out of four telecom operators uh, actually launched addressable TV yeah. offerings. So Orange, SFR, and Free. And Bouygues, no. Orange, SFR, oh. and Bouygues Telecom. Oh, free. and Bouygues, so, right. And so Free, yes. I, I know one was out of, uh, out of the game. Uh, we'll talk about that. I'm interested to know a bit more about that. Can we go into what are your offerings, right? How, how, how does that work? So maybe we can get started with I don't know, do, do you want to get started, Dominic? Uh, it's early days for Swisscom, but do you yes. want to speak to you know, your, your offering in addressable TV? It's sure, perhaps a bit of context. Um, we also launched last year, um, and perhaps a bit about the market. Um, the, the, market uh, the TV market in Switzerland is very liberal. We, have, uh, we had a seven-day sketch-up TV, and we saw a clear trend from linear to, uh, to the sketch-up. That um, of course put all the um, the broadcasters under pressure because why did this happen? Because customers um, were, uh, got used to skip the ads because you could fast forward. And so the first step in Switzerland was really to introduce um, certain new types of ads in the sketch-up window, in the seven-day sketch-up window. That means if you start, um, for example, a movie or a series, which was in the past in the seven days, you get a start ad. Then if you want to, let's say, skip the, um, the ads, you get a fast-forward ad. And if you pause the program, you have to pause it. So there are like three, uh, three types of new um, ad ads placed in the Swiss market. What is the offering? I mean, we, we had to introduce it. There was no way out, basically. Um, every big operator in Switzerland had to, so there was like not really like, um, we're not discriminating um, certain platforms. Uh, what we have is we offer an, an option where you can uh, buy for, in our case, for 6.90 per month 
um, ad-free option basically. So you are basically um, back to the old days where you can um, basically um, skip the ads in an even more convenient way. Um, at the moment we see that not really many ads are placed in this. It uh, has something to do with, um, let's say, the measurement. How do you measure the audience? Um, are you in those household panels or not? It was a bit of a the difficulty at the, at the um, beginning of, of this whole project. But now we see that uh, there is a ramp up of, uh, of advertisers. Um, but still, Swiss people, um, you have like a high earnings and we see in the first uh, weeks already that you have like um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't say the, the complete number, but many people who already bought this option that you can still skip the ads because they are not really willing to consume it. Interesting. And, right. and, and that, by the way, though there are really not many ads at the moment, uh, so there is uh, much more of capacity which is not utilized until this day. So something which is interesting and, and related to it, we are running like a TV service in five different countries and it's the same TV service for five different customers which are part of the group. And what we can see is despite of the fact that everyone has the same or similar offerings, similar features, people in different countries are using TV in different manners. So for example, Ketchup TV in the Czech Republic is much more used compared to Serbia that like on the same time most of the people were, like are watching Mina. And something that started here in the Czech Republic last year is that one of the broadcasters in the region decided that exactly as you mentioned that he is not allowing any more fast forwarding of the catch up which is very popular in the Czech Republic. So customers or let's call it the telco had three options. The first one is to pay more and to be able to skip it. The second one was uh, to force people not to do fast forwarding and the third one was to integrate with their specific uh, addressable TV solution. So here in the Czech market again it's like really unique everyone decided to force the customer to watch and not to allow them to fast forward as a kind of a war between the telcos and the broadcasters and they are saying okay you know what you are forcing so your customer will suffer because they have to watch it. So there must be a balance between, from one end, allowing the customers maybe to have commercials and to pay less. On the other end, it should not be so intrusive. Mm -hmm. So this is like how it goes. We are trying to find the balance. But again, catch up and like AVOD and, address, and like linear TV, we will have those addressable TV solutions there. Fantastic. Emmanuel, what are you doing at uh, Canal Plus? At an uh, oper operator, whatever you want, you know, whatever makes the most sense in your opinion on the topic. Uh, so uh, right, right now, in fact, uh, our uh, our main objective was to develop linear addressable TV yeah. on our overall uh, channel. Bevod, uh, Bevod is live till uh, I don't know uh, several years, uh, several years. Uh, so. Uh, Right now, in fact, uh, what we are working at is uh, launching ad linear, ad linear addressable TV as an operator. Uh, we will first start on our OTT environment because it's much easier than, our, than on our satellite set-top box. But tomorrow we ambition to, to, to move and to offer also this service on our uh, satellite set-top box. Albertian, you said you were live in five markets. What do you do? Is it the same across all of your markets? It's totally different, almost. Uh, it's funny that you're saying that you're launching first on the OTT application uh, uh, within Liberty. Uh, uh, my colleagues uh, tend to think the other way around, possibly because they know the other route. They know how to deploy uh, linear addressable. <laughs> and they're, sca that, uh, they're, they're scared of the OTT part. <laughs> Really funny, really funny. So we have uh, many different flavors. We have uh, uh, like for like linear ad replacement on the, on the set box, uh, similar to AdSmart in the UK, for example. Uh, in fact, AdSmart was the biggest, ex the big example for Liberty to start doing this. Uh, although in Belgium they are also active for uh, 
six, seven years already with uh, linear addressability. In Belgium, they also have uh, what we call break replacement, or which is called a digital ad insertion. So we replace the whole break on VOD, on replay, on uh, recordings. Uh, and all of that inventory is directly integrated into the ad servers of the broadcasters. So in this case, uh, SBS Belgium, which nowadays is called Play, and uh, DPG Media. Uh, in, yeah, I think in Ireland and the UK, we also have VOD, which is also integrated with the, uh, you know, the online ad servers. And on linear addressability, we tend to keep full control of the delivery. So we have our own uh, ad server. Uh, obviously, the broadcaster decides what the targeting is, so we get all the you know, criteria for the campaigns we get from them. But the control, the ecosystem controlling, is within the Liberty Network, basically to guarantee uh, privacy, uh, but also to guarantee the, the quality, which is, uh, I think, the number one requirement for addressable advertising. It needs to be an immersive, or high, at least a high quality experience. You basically don't need to see anything. It's just it's just an advertising break. Yeah. Uh, Florent, maybe you want to speak to, so Albertian mentioned Sky, yes. and, and we saw that in the UK, it seems to be the leading market in Europe when it comes to addressable TV with Sky. It is indeed. Yeah, and, uh, tell us a bit more about what you've done. I think it's a great transition yeah. indeed. Um, so basically, Cinemedia is a, a video tech provider and, and we've been part of Cisco, then we've been part of NDS, and we've primarily been a close partner to Sky indeed. And I think it's a very good transition, good thing that you're mentioning at Smart, because basically Cine Media is the technology that lies behind at Smart. And I think that most of you here are probably aware of what at Smart is. Uh, things Today, even in 2023, it set up the benchmark for what addressable TV is and should be in Europe. Before diving, deep diving into the details of at Smart, I think it's important to get a bit of uh, context information and background information. You mentioned in the UK, and I think uh, the United Kingdom is, has uh, had a head start in Europe with regard to addressable uh, advertising, this addressable advertising industry. And one number is actually stunning, it's 51%. 51% means that more than half of all revenue recorded by addressable TV across Europe are actually generated in the UK. And by the UK, I mean mainly at Smart. So it really uh, explains uh, how big and important and how much of a benchmark um, the at Smart product is. I'm not saying thing to, 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 to brag about the UK, I'm not, I'm not British myself, but it's, it's, it's something that, that really is paving the way for addressable TV across Europe. So if we want to dive just quickly into the business case of, of AdSmart, what, what Sky wanted more than a decade ago, because AdSmart was launched in 2012, so that was like a long time ago, as you can tell, most of our European markets uh, were not doing addressable TV Back, back in 2012, but the UK, Sky, actually launched this business. Um, what they wanted basically is to deliver targeted ads to a pool of set-top boxes, install-based set-top boxes, and they wanted to increase the value of their linear inventory. Um, and so basically they've been reach, reaching out to Cina Media, because Cina Media was the long-time technical partner of Sky. And uh, so we came out with a personalized addressable ad platform for Sky and we did all the technical bits. So in terms of feature, we're talking about um, uh, channel scheduling, we're talking about a playout automation interface, we're also talking about metadata, uh, uh, metadata and, and, and that kind of stuff, and, um, and, and a measure, audience measurement system. So a very compelling product a very global product that really set the benchmark for addressable TV in the UK within all of the Sky ecosystem but also in Europe because, because basically uh, uh, Sky is also present in several markets uh, uh, in, in continental Europe. So the outcome of this is that, that um, Sky and AdSmart could combine the brand building power of television 
with the data-driven precision of digital. That's basically the root and the basic definition of addressable TV and what, what AdSmart could, um, uh, could do. And, and at the end of the day, it could boost the advertising revenue of Sky by a, more than 100%, so Sky could actually more than double their revenue uh, thanks to, to the AdSmart product, so it's really a game changer. Um, and, and they could attract more advertisers which says a lot in terms of industry, they could attract more than an additional 70%, I think, advertiser to television, like advertisers that had, had never had done television before, uh, they could attract 70%, an additional 70% advertiser to television through AdSmart. So it's really a compelling product. I think it's, uh, 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 it's paved the way for addressable TV. And if we're thinking about the legacy of AdSmart, because this is a product that is already 10 years old now, then it's been improved year after year, um, and, and Cina Media remains a very close partner of Sky for all their ongoing improvement and, 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 and new feature. We're currently uh, working with them on their uh, all IP solution, for instance. Um, they're exploring their uh, uh, all IP getting out of the, the world of set-top box and satellites. And also Cine Media a couple of years ago, uh, decided to launch uh, their or standalone product, which is Iris, which is kind of the heir of AdSmart, but it's an ad server that, that can serve the needs of basically anyone. So not necessarily Sky or one single uh, uh, TV provider, but any player actually. We've created and come with this product that is extremely modular, that adds new feature around the unification of ad stack and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we're really trying to leverage the expertise that we've had with, uh, with AdSmart. Awesome, thank you for that. So, uh, Emmanuel, I, uh, I want to pick your brain on the operator data, right? So why should an operator you know, get started? How would they go about it? You're saying that you're in the process of doing that on this side of the campus business. Can you share a bit more about your experience on that front? Yes, um, in fact, when, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about uh, data, uh, we first think uh, about uh, targeting capabilities and uh, addressable, uh, addressable TV. Uh, but I think that, that uh, operators, uh, operators' data can also bring a lot of value uh, on traditional TV, where it's still uh, where advertisers put much of their budget right now in France. Uh, about 80% uh, of TV budget are captured by uh, traditional uh, TV. And uh, this is the, the reason why uh, at Canal Plus we, uh, we decided last year to uh, invest in a data clean room, uh, allowing us to match all the TV consumption and TV exposure data that we can collect uh, through the millions of uh, set of box that we, that we have among our, our, our customers and to match those data with third-party data in a very secure way and also based on anonymized data because we will be on linear so the idea will not be to target specific people but the, but the idea by doing this will be first of all to, to be able to identify uh, for instance on our channels which uh, ad breaks over index against data segments which are much more related to uh, the advertiser's business than uh, socio-demo uh, segments. And uh, by uh, optimizing their TV plans accordingly, uh, when we could measure the effectiveness, we, we could see that in average, those TV plans that are optimized with data are two times more efficient than uh, traditional uh, socio-demo uh, plans. Uh, there is also another, way, uh, another thing we are, we are doing uh, using our data clean room is to match our uh, data with uh, the CRM data of our advertisers, for instance. And then by doing this, we can uh, compare purchase, actual purchase behaviors between those that, that have been exposed versus non-exposed to the campaign, so to measure the effectiveness of uh, the traditional TV campaign. But also, as we know exactly 
when and uh, on which channel, around which programs the, the TV uh, ad exposure took place. We can also identify which context, which programs, what time of the days are the most uh, performant for uh, the advertiser's business in order to, to optimize their forthcoming campaigns. So we see here that uh, operators' data can bring a lot of value, not only for addressable TV, but also for traditional TV. And maybe the, the, the last thing I, I, would, um, I would like to, uh, to add is that um, operators' data can be also very valuable to, uh, to measure what is the incremental reach of addressable. Uh, in fact, uh, operators, when they have the, the spot list of a TV campaigns, they can know, they can know uh, if the households have been exposed or not to the traditional campaign. And in the same way, they can know whether these households have been exposed or not to the addressable linear or, or non-linear linear campaign. And then they have the ability to measure the incremental reach uh, that is brought by addressable. So, of course, it is only at a household level. Of course, it is only based on the customer's base of the operator, but it's still uh, the start, I would say, before the, the TV measurement uh, evolves. And uh, I know that it is a, a very, um, a very critical and requested information uh, from uh, advertisers. I think that's a great segue into the fact that it's an ecosystem. We have operators, we have advertisers, we have broadcasters. From this discussion with Bram, there seems to be challenges, right, in how this whole thing operates. Who does what? Who does the delivery? Who gets the inventory, etc. Um, any of you want to speak to you know the underlying model? How does that work? You know how how do you share responsibilities and, and of course at the end of the day you know share revenues? Um, okay, first like to just add a little bit on top of what Emmanuel just shared. There is a thin line between the big brother because theoretically we know everything. We know like what the customer is watching, when he's watching it. We don't know exactly. This is like a question which was like uh, was a hot question like a few years ago that the TV is like a household device and you don't really know if right now the husband with the kids or the wife or who is currently watching TV. But on the other hand I think that we are already uh, like uh, solved the problem because we know exactly like which kind of content and when and we know all the user journey of the customers so if someone on every Tuesday 8 p.m. watching football we might assume that might assume that this is not the kids. Uh, on the other hand, we can enrich the data with a lot of third-party data because it's not just like who is watching and what is watching, but it's also like Telco knows where the household is located. Is it in Prague? Is it in Germany? Or this is one aspect. The second aspect is how much money this household is spending on mobile devices, on the packages of the TV, on TVOD. Does this household is buying Netflix, etc.? This is another aspect. So we have how much money they are spending. We have where do they live. Now think about if we will be able to enrich it with other information that we might gather from third party, like insurance, um, cars, etc. So the reach and the level of data that we can merge together in order to do better targeting is huge. On top of it, if you're asking about the ecosystem, the ecosystem is, and this is one of the challenges, extremely fragmented, okay? There are so many solutions. Uh, no one is talking about the elephant in the room, which is uh, like, it looks like they are not there here, they are not here today, which is what we are doing with Google, joining them, finding them, going with them, when, etc. So, there is like, and everything is extremely fragmented. You will like take 10 telcos, you will get 15 views. What is the best way to go? If it is like a client side, backend side, to do it with that at the uh, uh, server or with the other, and it doesn't look like it's going to be consolidated in the near future. 
so if you're asking me if uh, it's going to be consolidated, if it's going to be like a regional solution that everyone will jump in and cooperate together, I don't think that this is the case for the near future. Albertian, in terms of, uh, I'm saying the underlying model, but how, how do you go about, you know, buying, you know, advertising on addressable uh, TV? How, how does that work, right? If I were a company, uh, an SME company, can I easily do that? Because sometimes it's said that, you know, traditional TV is too expensive, too complicated, etc. Are you, what are you doing on that front? Uh, very simple, you just go to the, the local sales house. So uh, we tend to be a partner for the, the broadcasters in, in the, the various markets we're active in. Uh, so we facilitate the technology uh, and the uh, local uh, sales houses to sell the, the inventory. So we don't get a share of the inventory. We have different business models, ref share models, kickback models. Uh, sometimes it's even uh, factored into the, the carriage deal. Um, so we just tend to be a, a partner. Uh, and how the local sales houses, the broadcasters sell this, obviously up to them. It's, it's often uh, a direct sale, but obviously, uh, as, uh, as uh, Emmanuel just uh, already said, there are a lot of new to TV advertisers which tend to be a lot smaller. So you need to make it easy for them to buy, you know, just like you're buying uh, uh, AdWords or, or Google, for example. That's the sort of thing you need to create, I think, to make it attractive and, and providing the, a similar uh, targeting granularity, although uh, in some markets where we're about to launch, namely the Netherlands, uh, broadcasters still have a bit of cold feet, you know, and they want to start with, you know, a bit of a granular uh, targeting capabilities, but not too much, you know, uh, because there is no demand, mm -hmm. uh, and, and also because it's mostly done by the, uh, the TV and sales team, not the digital team. So there is still a, you know, still a bit of a silo between those. Yes, in fact, um, I was thinking of uh, what folks uh, you, you were sa saying. Right now, we, we are uh, experiencing a, a very um, a very interesting case study, and the, the campaign is running right now. Cross fingers, everything is going well. In fact, we are working with uh, an, um, a shampoo product. Uh, it was not a TV advertiser, they, 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 they only run a, a, a digital, uh, digital campaigns. And so what we are doing on linear addressable television is that we identify people that uh, browse online on uh, pages uh, related to uh, curly hairs. So uh, we identify people that are very interested in uh, having curly, curly hairs. And so this data uh, from the, uh, these uh, online publishers is matched with uh, the operator's data. Um, uh, we, are, we are using uh, LiveRump for the, the matching. And then LiveRump push on our free will, which is our uh, ad server, this, uh, this uh, segment. So we can air on our channel uh, a, a specific ad to get a beautiful curly hair to this specific audience. And at the end of the campaign, the operator's data will be matched with the CRM data of the advertiser in order to be able to measure the effectiveness of the campaign by comparing uh, purchase behavior of those that have been exposed versus non-exposed. So this is a beautiful uh, use case for a uh, new to TV advertiser and using a third party data, as you were uh, saying. So, is the advertiser onboarding their first party data onto LiveRamp for that? Uh, no, in fact, they, uh, we, are, we are using another, it's a little bit complicated, another um, uh, measurement company that match the IP address of the, uh, of the, of the telco operator with uh, the IP address of people browsing on the advertiser's uh, website and they do that on their own data clean room. So it's a little bit complicated, but at the end it's interesting because it's a third party uh, data targeting. It's uh, new to TV advertisers and we, 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 we go to the, the end because the, we will measure at the end the effectiveness of the campaign. I love that example because 10 years ago on traditional TV, regardless of the price, but 
there was no interest for them to do that because at the end of the day they would have had and had on the current year to the general you know French population up a bit of a shortage Too much waste. Dark. Exactly. Whereas here, in a way, you're taking the power of digital. So they were digital advertisers before and applying it to television. And they can speak to curly hair fans. Would be interested in knowing how many people that is. Another interesting aspect is um, the regional component. Um, as I told you, we are right now doing this whole addressable in the catch-up. We have one linear TV channel. And what is our use case? We show a lot of soccer this linear channel because we are the rights holder in Switzerland and of course you know if there is a certain club playing then you can of course include the regional aspect of I don't know sports bars in this region stuff like that to promote their offerings which is at the moment without your addressable TV nonsense to yeah. be honest. So addressable TV first time uh, advertisers and small and medium enterprises not just the big guys with the big budgets essentially yeah. Interesting. So we quickly touched on, you know, how does that scale? If it's very customized by market, if every operator is, is doing its own thing, how does that scale? Is there a path to a regional platform, to harmonization, standardization? What's going on in that front, Alberto? It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah basically, uh, being at Liberty Global with uh, uh, operating companies in, in many countries, are focused on rolling out blueprint solutions everywhere. Uh, but the reality is each country is different, each country has different requirements. So it's really difficult to uh, you know, uh, deliver one size fits all. Uh, however, th there is some standardization, I would say, you know, on the uh, markers in the linear feed. We standardize on SCETI markers, SCETI 35 markers, which is very common in also in the online market, obviously coming from the US. Uh, however, in different markets, uh, different signals are being used. Sometimes even older versions, like in, in Switzerland. Um, and in the Netherlands, they tend to uh, like to have lots of different sketching markers in, in, uh, you know, in the feed. Uh, and on the IP ecosystem, uh, we tend to standardize on the latest FAST and VMAP standards. So there is some standardization. But the flavors and the way people want to sell the ads and the way to, they want to uh, sell, for example, like for like replacement, so not uh, cut the whole breakout and then fill it up, but uh, uh, replacing it like for like, um, or, or uh, replacing the whole break, that also brings a, a difference in uh, what you need to deliver and how it's being integrated. Yeah. And then unfortunately, even, even the online players in the market are not always uh, meeting the requirements for high quality uh, uh, TV uh, at delivery. Interesting. Okay. Won't mention any names. <laughs> uh, anyone wants to add to that? Han, you were pretty clear on the fact that you don't see that happening you know, any, anytime soon. Isn't that a problem though when in front of us we have the big guys, you know, the Google of the world who were able to build something that has, you know, not almost immediate global scale but close to it? Yeah, maybe one remark on, on the scalability. It is indeed a challenge because it re requires a big investment, specifically on broadcast technology. Uh, you need a large scale. Uh, maybe good to mention one of our own use cases uh, being Ireland uh, until recently being part of uh, Virgin Media in UK so it's one big organization we had a, uh, a deal in place with, uh, with Sky Edsmart uh, but without the deal in the UK I don't think uh, uh, the, you know, the business case for Ireland was, was, uh, yeah, was, was profitable okay. so. interesting Scale also goes into, you need to educate right, the entire ecosystem in making sure that they do invest you know, time and money in uh, putting budget on addressable TV. H how is that happening today? So you were talking about silos. It's on, in the TV, the digital budget. Just, uh, sorry, Dominique has to go, our apologies. Um, was it easy to convince, you know, advertisers and agencies to pay attention? You know, ha how is that working? Who's buying uh, adjustable TV? Is it the TV team, the digital teams? 
in general, the, the TV teams. However, it actually differs. So for linear replacement, definitely the, the TV sales teams. For video mobile, it's more the digital teams. Then we see uh, almost programmatic setups, uh, mostly uh, programmatic, direct, guaranteed budgets, etc. Uh, yeah, so the, 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 the traditional way of doing business also prevents further you know, evolution and innovation sometimes. Okay. Um, in fact, we, <coughs> we, uh, we, we have both, uh, as told you, <coughs> sorry, 50% <coughs> of our um, first advertisers were um, TV advertisers and other 50% newcomers. Uh, I think that uh, we, we, we have uh, people, uh, people selling, working in the TV team and we have people in the digital team because they are not always the same people uh, in the, at the agency level. Uh, what I think is to, 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 develop, uh, uh, to develop digital in uh, addressable linear TV, it was a key for us uh, that our uh, inventories um, uh, are open in programmatic because uh, most of them purchase with programmatic, so that is the case right now. All our addressable linear uh, TV inventories are open uh, in the different uh, uh, DSP. And also there is the uh, local market, so is it, it's not TV, it's not always digital, but uh, there is, uh, there is a, a big source of revenue here that we need to, uh, to address. And is there something missing from addressable TV that you know uh, advertisers and agencies are expecting and they're not seeing? We we're talking a bit about you know measurement. We'll hear about uh, that later on today. Uh, in fact, and maybe especially for uh, traditional uh, uh, TV, um, advertisers uh, that, that are uh, that advertise on, on TV, is uh, measuring uh, the the effectiveness. So uh, measuring the First of all, the, the business effectiveness of addressable TV and compare, and compare it with what they get on, a, on a traditional TV and also to, to measure the incremental reach that brings uh, addressable TV. So for those advertisers, it, uh, it was key and this is the reason why uh, all uh, the, the main sale, um, ad sales house uh, in France uh, decided to, to collaborate all together and to finance um, um, effectiveness, effectiveness measurement of uh, addressable campaign. So we <coughs> offered the campaign, we offered the measurement and we worked with uh, measurement companies to measure first of all the effectiveness of linear addressable TV to, uh, to drive business for the brand and also to drive incremental uh, reach. Florent, in a market like the UK, uh, what's going so, on? Yeah, I think on basically measurement is indeed a, a major barrier to the real takeoff for addressable TV. So basically in the UK the, the measurement body is, is, is uh, BARB. We've got the equivalent in, in France which is Mediametry, GSK in Germany. Um, but I think that it's important to recall that more than half of advertisers that have tested addressable television before and are quite convinced that it is important also say that without a, a, a consistent and compelling uh, measurement system, uh, uh, this will have a bad impact on their ad spend in the years to come. So we really need to find consistency and a standard for measurement uh, of addressable TV. There, there are currently a lot of issues, you've mentioned, Emmanuel, you've mentioned some of them. I think that, that we have to face the fact that most of the viewers are being undercounted by the current uh, measurement bodies. There's this inability to uh, count multi-platform audience or make the distinction even between linear and addressable and reconciliate against national ratings sometimes can be a hurdle. So it's, it's, um, it's really tricky. There's also the inherent uh, uh, part of uh, addressable TV which is targeting in a household and you're never really sure whether the exposed uh, uh, personalized message is actually seen by the, the, the target. So there are many issues in terms of uh, uh, um, measurement, audience measurement that are being tackled pretty much locally. 
Um, but I think the industry needs to agree technically on standards, G uh, Mediametry, GSK. On the digital side, you've got Nielsen. I think Nielsen has come with their uh, offering, Nielsen One Ad, that is uh, this year it's supposed to transact or uh, allow transaction on a single set of metrics across linear and digital. So this is pretty much where we probably want to go to, to bring consistency in the measurement so that the advertiser actually knows what he's got for his, uh, for his investment and his uh, return on investment and that kind of stuff. Fascinating. So one last question. We have five minutes left, but I'd like to hear from all of you on what, what's, the, what's the role of addressable TV in the wider you know, advertising space? It's, it's a bit of a, of a wide question, but is it here to stay? How, how fast will it grow? Uh, you know, and how does that you know, compare with we hear a lot about CTV advertising. We'll have time to speak to that later on today. I, th I, think, I think ATV is here to stay and it's really the future for television because basically for advertisers, uh, it kind of goes without saying, but it brings the best of both worlds in the fact that, that we still have the power of television. We still have the brand building power and brand safe environment that TV brings, but also ATV brings this data-driven precision that digital uh, 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 bring. So, so I think that it's all about applying digital targeting to television and the closest, we will never be in a complete web environment for sure, but the closest we are to that reality, uh, the, the better. And we need unification, we've been talking a lot about standards, about harmonization. I think we need to have this kind of unification so that we can really have ATV at scale across Europe. Ryan? I have not too many things to add. I think that, as I mentioned before, it's like here to stay, it will grow. I think uh, we are currently gathering or trying to get the critical mass. The moment we will like have the critical mass, then everyone quickly will adopt it. Currently, like uh, most of, let's call it the telcos, and the others are like just sitting on a fence and like uh, looking who is doing what and when the critical mass will be there and the advertiser, like the broadcasters and the advertisers will start like seeing that everyone are going there and they will start push and everyone will just go there. This is the future. Um, uh, maybe it's the moment to, 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 to share uh, something very new that uh, happened uh, in France. Uh, two, uh, two months ago, uh, Free, which is a, a very big uh, telco operator in, uh, in France, they decided to, to launch an uh, AVOD platform offering their, their customers uh, a very large catalog of uh, film and series that they can uh, access for free and it is uh, uh, ad supported. And, uh, and, uh, we have been chosen to, to be the, the ad sales house of, uh, of this, uh, this offer. It's interesting because it, it was the, the first time in France a telco operator uh, proposed that, that kind of offer. I, I don't know if it already exists in, uh, in, other, in other countries. Um, uh, at the start, because we, we are still at the start, it had a, a lot of success because from the start we had dozens of advertisers that wanted to, to, be, uh, to be there at the moment it was, uh, it was launched. Um, we were, to be honest, we were a little bit worried about the, the inventory because we had in mind what happened to Netflix. So we even refused some campaigns because we were not sure to deliver. And uh, at the end, uh, in fact, it was a hit. And uh, the inventory is, uh, is here and is uh, higher than uh, what we, uh, we expected. So it, it shows that uh, initiatives like that, we, we will see other, uh, not mentioning uh, all uh, fast TV channels that are, are launched every day. So it's obvious that this market will, uh, will grow. What I'm just wondering is that all this, the, the proliferation of this uh, ad-supported service, uh, it will also create, I guess, more fragmentation in the, in the audience. And uh, the, the real challenge for advertisers right now is to be able to maintain the reach of their, uh, of their TV campaign. So I'm quite sure traditional TV is far from, uh, from being dead because uh, it's uh, right now the only, uh, the only media that, that can uh, reach instantly millions of, of people, but more and more
more TV will be combined with addressable, linear, non-linear, fast, and, and, uh, and so on. And I really think that once again, TV measurement will be key to measure what is the incremental, uh, incremental business, incremental reach that is, uh, that is generated by, by all this, uh, this offer. And TV measure, measurement is, a, is key to make this market work. Yeah, I think things will become easier in, in, in the future, so uh, addressable uh, TV advertising is here to stay. Uh, currently, uh, from an operator perspective, maybe also from a broadcaster perspective, we're still living in a, this hybrid world with broadcast technology and IP technology. But in the near future, the next five to ten years, everything will become full IP and that will make things much easier. Uh, it will be easier to standardize fast VMAP standards, etc. Uh, and I think everything will become addressable. There will be no difference anymore between uh, linear TV or video on demand. Anything can be addressable because it's full IP. So you can integrate it with the, uh, probably even with the existing ad service in the market. Uh, and if not, they will slowly uh, uh, innovate and become ready for that. I think we're it. That's it. Thank you guys. Uh, I hope I've learned tons of stuff. I hope you did too. Uh, thank you everyone. And uh, we'll move